I did a HND in ceramic design at Stoke on Trent. All oh, right. Because so you you went you seem to have moved around a bit when you were studying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is that when I was doing my foundation, yeah, they didn't seem to know what to do with me. And then we had a life modelling session, and I've always been good at modelling. Yeah. And it was Moira Lamont that said you need to go here. So that's how I ended up at Stoke on Trent. Wow. So you grew up in Swinton, is that right? Yeah, yeah. The absolutely fabulous pottery um, department at Swinton Comprehensive with a lovely chap called Mr. Fishwick. And he was just really good. I used to, on my own um, decision, I went to the night classes because I used to just love doing um, ceramics, moulding, modelling. All that sort of thing. So that would have been when you were in secondary school, was that? Yeah, that, so that's like, I went on to do my O-level in one year and my A-level in one year. So one you were year. pro... Uh, I was good pro at ceramic, it. Pro-ceramic, prodigy. I was good at it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did my A-level and I always regretted it because I forgot to answer a question worth 20 marks. <laughs> and I would have got an A if, oh, if, if I'd have answered that question yeah. and he never let me forget it. I got a B. <laughs> That's not bad, you know. No, no, so I've always been good at, you know, clay, it's like second nature to me. It's, it's funny because somebody will go on the wheel and I can tell, you can tell whether they're going to be good or not because it's how they handle the clay on the wheel and you yeah. think, nah. I don't even think I got <laughs> as far as the wheel when I tried it. I don't know why it is, but I've just always been very good at making. So, like, I don't call myself a, a painter or anything like that. I'm, the word at the moment is polymath. Right. So you do anything, yeah. and that's what I do, anything. If I have an idea... Does also mean you're a genius? Or? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it means I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> the, the practicalities of um, being an artist, or maybe a polymath, as, as you said, are, are the bit that I guess a lot of people don't see or know about. I mean, No, they, they tend to think, oh, you're an artist, so you're a painter, or you're an artist, so you're an oil painter, or a watercolourist. You know, some people... They, they're that way inclined and that's where, where they specialise, but I, I do everything. Yeah. I get bored. I have an idea and then I, I try and put it into practice. And I find the serendipity of working is very important. How do you mean? Because how um, something that you might do last year will affect what you're going to do this year. Mm. Like with the metal sculpture that I did, that's now taking me off onto this path of doing things for outside, yeah. um, experimenting with spe with the metal surfaces and the paint and all that sort of stuff, and and just sort of like pushing that as a media. Yeah, well, it's often that thing where if, you know, showing things in galleries and isn't well, it's you know, it's it's part of it, but it's not all of it, and actually. Getting the work elsewhere is sometimes more interesting. He seems to just pick on a certain sort of people to put in an exhibition, mm. from my point of view. I apply for these things and you, know, and, and you look at the stuff that's in there and you think, ah, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I used to apply for the ones in uh, the mall galleries and then I realised that was just beating my head against a brick wall. I thought, no, no, stop doing that yeah. because you're not going to get anywhere. So I, I try and concentrate mainly on the local galleries, local area. Yeah. In a lot of ways, I probably think and work very similar to you. I'm always trying different things and often do one thing and get bored of it and then want to do something else and you have to learn how to do that in the process. And it's not the easiest process to put yourself through. But I, I would argue, in fact, I, a, when I had a job interview to teach, I argued that the fact I work in all these different ways and do all these different things is beneficial in terms of the teaching. Because mm. I think, I mean, you've sort of taught in lots of different places in lots of different ways and taught mm. many different things. Um, I mean, do you see that as being an advantage? An advantage or? Yeah, yeah, I think so, because then you bring a wider perspective to what you're trying to teach. Um, and, and I think the students benefit from that, really. Um, it, instead of going back to the narrow thing of just doing oil painting or watercolour painting. Um, if, you, if you can try and be adventurous and instead of thinking, oh, I can't do that because I can't weld, find somebody to teach you like I yeah. did and get on and do it. Well, the more you do, the more possibilities you create. Or... Yeah, yeah, because I think that's me. It's part of me being an artist of that progression. The question I ask myself is, do I actually enjoy this? Like, I find I do all these things, but I don't know whether 
whether I actually enjoy it or which bit of it I enjoy. I'm not quite sure, but. Oh, I, do, I immensely enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I, immens <laughs> I immensely enjoy the adventure. I think it's because for a long time, I wasn't in um, what you would call a structured environment. When I was doing the nine to five, I felt like I was being choked. Yeah. So was that, that when you were teaching? No, that was when I was working as a graphic designer. I had to put a straight jacket on, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> which reflected in my work because it meant that if it came to anything tight detail, I just could not do it. When I left it, I sort of like got a mental image of me running away going, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going back. I'm, I don't want to work for someone like that again. Yeah. It was just too restrictive, but you've got to earn a living. So, so it's a, it has been a struggle uh, until now. I mean, I've never ever, in, in all the stuff I've done through my life, I've never ever stopped working as an artist. Being born in Swinton and growing up here, and that's, I mean, is, is that, how, how much do you, did that sort of direct you towards being an artist? Or? Mr Fishwick did. So it was through <laughs> school, was it? Yeah. yeah, well, horses as well. Horses? <laughs> I know anybody from school says, oh, you used to draw horses, didn't you? Because <laughs> I always wanted one. So if I couldn't have one, I used to draw them instead. <laughs> and that's, that's really where a lot of it comes from. Mm, but they always run away with me. That's why I've got a bike. <laughs> <laughs> bike stops and horses don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're really into motorbikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I passed my test when I was 28 and I never looked back. I've got a CB750 F1, which is a 1976. Wow. This means nothing to me, but it sounds impressive. It's, it's quite a classic, and that's been the bike I've been abroad on four times. Anyway. It seems like freedom as well. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think that's what's coming out of this yeah. interview. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, freedom is what I like. It's interesting to see what motivates you in terms of set, because you, you, the, the sort of class you set up here, how did that begin? Well, my friend Faye said they were looking for tutors. And I was looking for a bit of extra work, so I walked down and said, hey, you need some tutors. I'm qualified, I've got experience. And they said, OK, when can you start? You know, it gives me that little bit of extra income to just survive, really. And spend on your work. And spend on my work, <laughs> yeah. yes. I applied to um, for the commission for doing the trophies for Canterbury Arts Festival. Uh, Canterbury Culture Awards, that's it. And they chose my design. That was my first sort of big commission, which was good. It gave me the confidence to get on with it. Yeah, well, it seems like you've been, you know, you're really pushing things forward at the minute. Trying to, trying to, but it's very hard. Like you say, getting your foot in the door and getting your work accepted. There was a call out again, um, and they wanted someone to design a memorial for Ellis Town. This is where I get up there. Oh. <laughs> at Colville. And they accepted it. Oh, wow. I wanted it to do, to do it in bricks, carve it, fire it, put it together. And over the other side of the roundabout where it was, the door had got something like that. And they said, no, we want it in stone. OK. <laughs> so I did in it in stone. stone. Wow. <laughs> I learned how to stone carve. Yeah. Just I, like that? Just like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went and talked to people. I looked on YouTube. That's, yeah, that's How would you do it? Um, got some stone tools. Um, again, my partner Russ was just so great. He, he, he's such a, um, a, a resource, actually, when, you, when you're doing something quite manual as that. And I'll say to him, what tool do you think I could have for this? And he'll say, oh, yeah, you need an air compressor. And I did that. And I know somebody was selling one. So we bought this air compressor so that what we did was we used the big hilty thing and the air compressor to just uh, rough, rough it all out. Yeah. And then the rest of it was hand carving. Wow. And, you know, you just find out how to do it and do it. <laughs> if you ask me, why, do you, why is it that you get upset? Or... I don't want to put, push I just, you any further. I just, I just find it emotional. I, just, I don't know. I just find it emotional to think I achieved something like that. Because you, you've always seemed to have pursued the, this sort of freedom and to do these things, and it almost feels like you've almost got there, or, or maybe, um, maybe not. It would be if I counted myself as an established artist, but I'm not. So yeah, I'm not there. I'm miles away from being there. I often sort of uh, struggle with this because, on one hand, part of me is always like, oh, you know, I mean, generally just well being 
Yorkshire, you in, innately slightly anti-establishment, I think, anyway. Um, and so you, there's, there's always this problem of wanting the recognition or wanting uh, to be accepted, but then also not necessarily accepting them. I don't know. I don't know. I've never yeah. been into a position where I've been in accepted, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I just do what I do because it's part of me. It's who I am. You can't help it. No, you just have to do it. Sometimes I wish I, I, it, it, it wasn't that way. <laughs> I, I, I didn't continually feel compelled to have to do these things. I'd be could... going on holiday to Barbados every yeah. year instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's great, I'll do that. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll just spend my money on, on making a, art. On an air compressor. <laughs> on an air compressor, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't do it for recognition. I do it because I want to do it. Mm. Almost if you had the recognition, would it take the fun out of it? I don't know, that's what I, I sometimes worry about. If you actually finally won the lottery, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't apply. I don't apply to the lottery because I'm I'm scared of winning it. Well, that's it. If you won it, what I'd would you do? It. I'd give it all to charity. Yeah. I'd give it all to. No, what I would do is I would have a studio. <laughs> <laughs> I would have somewhere to do all this stuff that I like doing, because I can't afford a studio. <laughs> so I, it's in the backyard at home. <laughs> you know, it, I think people have studios are really lucky. The thing about being creative, if you try and pin it down, it doesn't work. But if it just happens, it's more natural, I find. But you've got to be able to be brave enough to just let go. Freedom again. Yeah. <laughs> it must be. I'm learning quite a lot. Yeah, yeah we yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that freedom and, and just, um, and that is being creative. The most important thing for an artist would be uh, courage because I think it's not easy to do a lot of this stuff and it's often going going into the unknown or there's a lot of risk yeah. or there's a lot of judgment there's all these sorts of things and actually yeah. having the courage to do it yeah. is is the is the hard part yeah it's that I said that earlier you have to be brave and just go off and do it um, but you, you've got to be able to have that basic confidence to be able to go that way and that's where a good teacher comes in. Mm. Like you, you know yourself, if, if you can see somebody that just needs to go and you give them the confidence and you'll give them the confidence yeah. by just even talking to them. And, and you sort of like sit and you well, can, you can do this. Yeah. I, I like what you're doing. I, I think you should try that and if it doesn't work try it this way instead and you, you just you know the little chicks going off <laughs> swimming so you're part of the uh, south yorkshire biker scene yes i'm part of street fighter riff raff street <laughs> i wasn't ready for that <laughs> it's sort of linked to this thing about artistic expression really because when you build a bike uh, for men that's what they're doing they, they take a bike, a standard bike, and then they will adapt it, they'll paint it, make a statement with a motorcycle. There are women that do it, and there's a lot more women do it now than when I first started riding. It used to be quite, ooh, you're a girl, chick, ooh, yeah. riding a bike. <laughs> but there's a lot more women coming into it now, which is really good. But they do use these bikes as a mode of expression. I've been involved in that culture since my twenties. So it does affect how you look at things. And before, because of the network of the mines and the steelworks and everything, it used to be a network of who can do what. But now all that industrial areas are, are sort of, they're all dissipating. That network mm. is also dissipating. The ability of people to do things is dissipating. So now we're walking back in. Yeah, we've got to dissipate. Yeah, we've got to dissipate. So um, that's one of the reasons why bikes, uh, biking fraternity is quite tight knit because of this individuality that goes on. Yeah.